Hello again everyone and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I'm John and as always, thank you so much for being here. A good topic? Let's do it. What's your weirdest or most coincidental experience? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. When I was 17, my grandpa had a stroke and was slowly going downhill in the hospital. My grandma figured even if he ever got better, he wouldn't be able to drive. So she gave me his truck, complete with camper shell and bed carpeting. He was in the hospital for several months. One day, for no reason whatsoever, I decided to sit in the back of the truck and just think a bit. I was back there for about 45 minutes daydreaming about nothing. When I came inside, my dad told me my grandpa had died 45 minutes ago. I was taking some pictures at the graveyard. It was for a class, so my friends were there modeling for me. Anyways... I ask one of my friends to try to look like she's crying while I adjust my camera. When I go to take her picture, I see she's doing a great job. She's sobbing up and crying. I take a couple of pictures before realizing that she is looking at this big family grave with the exact names and last names as her relatives. There were her dad's name, mom, sister, and brother's exact name and exact last name. Her family lives in another state. And they are all alive. So that was spooky. But later on, we we're all in my car. And we we're listening to some music one of us had on a USB. We were listening to a son for like the third time. When the sound goes off and a horrible voice says, Get back from where you came from. And the song continues where it left off. We were so creeped out, we had to stop and catch our breath. To this day, I still don't know what it was. Maybe interference from another radio? I had no idea, but it was creepy. I once attended an 80s themed party planning to dress as Morty McFly. I spent a day shopping in thrift shops in a large city. After visiting at least six, I had everything but a denim jacket. Not a single one had one, crazy I know. My friends and I decided to try one more before we gave up for the day. We walk in, the cashier meets us at the door, and all she says is nothing. We're having a sale on denim jackets today only. And she showed us two full racks of nothing but denim jackets in every size. Well, this happened to a friend of my dad's, but it is definitely a weird coincidental experience. It all started about 10 years ago when Joe, we'll call him that, my father's friend, was at a local gas station and saw a very unique lighter with a skull on it. He decided to buy it to smoke, etc. A few years later, Joe was out in Lake Michigan snowmobiling during the winter, and for some reason, he brought his lighter with him. After a long day on the lake, he realized his lighter must have fallen out of his pants and knew there was no way to find it out in the ice. The next year, Joe was with his family down in Florida eating at a restaurant. As he's eating there, he hears the sound of a lighter makes go off, and right then and there, he knew it was his lighter. The reason was that his unique lighter had a very defined sound when lit, and Joe, who had been using it for so long, must have known that the lighter was his. Joe sits there, thinks for a bit, and hears it again. That's when he gets up and decides to look around the restaurant. As he looks around, he sees another family, and a man about 30 to 40, holding the lighter with a skull on it, just like Joe's. Obviously, Joe asks him how he got it, and the man says he was out walking in the shallow water of Lake Michigan by his cabin and found it somewhat buried in the sand. Creepy, huh? My grandpa has always been the type of guy who loves science fiction and the paranormal. One time, he told me a story that has always freaked me out. Years ago, when my mother and sisters were little, my grandpa had a Ouija board that he'd like to mess around with down in their basement. One day, he asked the Ouija board questions about himself that the board could answer, i.e., where am I from? What's my address? Who is my mother? Just to see what it would say. He asked, how many daughters do I have? And it responded with three. My grandpa said, I have four. And the board responded with, not for long. Two weeks later, one of his daughters died in a car crash. After all this time, we talk about these Ouija boards and people still use them. What good comes from it? I don't think any. Using a Ouija board in an abandoned house, me, my girlfriend, and five other friends were using one in the attic of this place when the door effing slammed shut with no wind. 
We all glanced around, thinking one of us had locked us in. Wrong. We were all there. I tried to open the door with no luck. We had to take the door hinges off to get out. Once we did this, we inspected the door to find there was no locking mechanism or anything blocking us in. We decided it was best if we just left. On our way out through the open back door, we all felt a strange resistance and sudden coldness when we passed through the doorway. I don't know what the was in that house, but I don't want to look for it further. My friend and I were in the car one night driving to see a movie. I had the most eerie feeling for no reason, and it wouldn't go away, so I vocalized it to her. I have the creepiest feeling right now. I have no idea why, she says. Me too. What the hell? I've been feeling creeped out for the last 10 minutes. A couple of minutes later, her phone rings with an unknown number. She answers, but no one is there, so she hangs up. Rings again, same number, picks up. Then my phone rings a different unknown number. I get on the phone and say, hello, hello. I hear my own voice saying hello on her cell phone. We realize we're talking to each other, get really freaked out, and throw our phones in the back seat. A couple seconds later, there's a loud bang on the side of her car door like someone threw something at the car, but there were no cars or people around. Pull over and get out. There's a huge dent in the side of her car, thoroughly creeped out for the rest of the night. My aunt, dad's sister, died young of cancer on October 3rd, 2007, when I was a junior in high school. In my senior year, I took advanced art, and we were working on clay sculptures one day. At the tables of four, one person was instructed to go and grab a stack of old newspapers from a cabinet that contained hundreds of old newspapers the teacher supplied for protecting tables during projects. Another guy goes to grab the paper and tosses me some from my area of the table. I begin work on my sculpture and realize my materials are in the obituary section. I read them over and for a second saw my aunt's obituary right where my hand was. The date happened to be October 2nd, 2008, and since 2008 was a leap year, it was a full 365 days from my aunt's death. The stack of coincidences seemed too much for me. I believe it was her trying to give me a sign of something. Okay, so this is kind of low-key compared to what you were expecting, so here goes. 15-year-old me is on family vacation with some relatives in a rented house. I have an amazing family, so these trips are always filled with non-stop fun, games, and whatnot. Anyway, one night we were playing Taboo, and things are really heating up. The score is close, and nerves are on edge. Okay, maybe I'm exaggerating, but you get the point. So we begin to move on to the next person, and we discover that the timer, a mini hourglass, is gone. Like, we had just finished one person's turn and now it's gone. So we search all over the room, hell. I think some people went into the kitchen trying to find it, but to no avail. After probably 45 minutes, we give up and move on to something or other, and eventually go to bed in some ungodly hour. As we're all preparing for sleep, I hear my older sister shouting, I found it! I found the timer! Of course, we all rush in, and lo and behold, there it is. She, who was 27 at the time, explains that it was in her sock, and she only found it upon taking it off. Of course, we all accuse her of putting it there as the only excuse, but she adamantly denies doing it. Normally, I wouldn't believe her, but this is so unlike her and outlandish that I don't even know what to think. To this day, she denies doing it, and it's a topic of heated debate at every family gathering. TL, TR, hourglass materializes in sock. Confusions abound to this day. I lost touch with my best friend after high school. She was a troubled soul, and I worried or thought about her often. I looked her up all the time and just could not track her down. I had a dream that I went to visit her and she had a daughter, which I figured was unlikely because she was a lesbian. Fast forward to this past year, she found me on Facebook. I check out her profile before we really have a chance to chat or reconnect, and she has a daughter that looks exactly like my dream. Also, my dream was right around her daughter's birthday. Mine is also graveyard related. Weird, right? Me and a friend and a future wife were hanging around in the graveyard near my house smoking weed and whatnot when I was 15 to 16. 
Me and a friend had stopped to look at the grave of our mutual friend's stepdad, who had died unexpectedly a couple of years ago. We knew him, and were probably a little weedy. My future wife had handed and wandered well down the row away from us, and as we stood chatting about the last time we'd seen the dead guy, etc., my future wife came back toward us to get me to come with her, looked at me and said, Come on, Patrick, I want to show you something. Patrick was the name of the dead guy's only son. She had no reason to call me it and did not know what we were looking at or why. She also did not know him or his son. Needless to say, we freaked out a little. DL, DR, future wife, possibly channels dead person. I was off-roading in a pretty remote area and my Cherokee died. I mean, just cut off, I'm dead. Sorry, Charlie, dead. Being a Jeep guy, I know how it acted right before it was the CPS crankcase positioning sensor, which is fairly common in 4.0 Jeeps. I was stupid, wheeling alone at about 4 miles plus from the pavement and another 15 miles from town. To make it even better, I had little cell reception. This was a while ago, back when we had analog phones, and it was almost 8 p.m. It would be dark soon. I knew if I got back to the paved road, I could get reception and a call. So I committed myself to walking out, shut the door, took a step, and tripped over my own foot. I fell flat on my stomach, and right there, right in front of me, was a CPS. It was for a Jeep. Now, a normal person would think that someone was out wheeling, had the same issue, and this was a dead one as well. But I thought, good. I carry plenty of spare tools and usually parts, but not a CPS because I'm dumb. So I decided to use what little daylight was left to try and swap it in. I had a mag light as well. So worst case scenario, I would just be walking out the dark. Put it on, which is a huge pain in the ass due to its location on the back of the engine at the bell housing, and turn the key, started right the... Oh, no issues at all. In fact, it has been seven years since this incident and I'm still running the same CPS. I know this may not sound creepy, but I thought it was one hell of a weird coincidence. My first long-term boyfriend and I shared quite a few coincidences that we figured out over the four years of dating. Our fathers share the same first name, as well as our uncles on our father's side. Our middle siblings, both in families of three children, share the same birthday. We both lived in Germany on the same army base, at the same time, I never knew each other, and after moving around the country as children, we both ended up at the same high school. There are even a few more, but over the years I've forgotten some of them. We moved into this house about a year and a half ago. While signaling the rental agreement, we realized that landlord and his son have the same last name as me. No relation, but weird. Then last summer, my boyfriend started working as a car salesman. He's selling a car to a young woman and he gets her driver's license to make a copy. The address on her license is our address. He asks her if the address is current. Of course, she says no. And we come to find out she used to live in our house right before we moved in. And he just happened to be selling her car almost exactly a year later. She tells him some stuff we didn't know about our landlord, including the fact that the landlord's brother, who used to own the home, died in our bedroom a few years ago and left the house to his brother, my landlord. He had the same last name as me too. Again, no relation. Before we knew anyone had died in there, we used to make jokes about there being a ghost in the bedroom due to a weird purple light in the ceiling fan that only shows up in pictures. DL, DR. My new landlord and dead brother share my last name. My boyfriend sold his car to a previous tenant of our house. When I was a kid, maybe around 9 or 10, my friends and I would always hang out in the woods behind our bus stop. There were four of us that would always go back there, but my friend Alex and I would go back there most often. There wasn't really anything inherently weird or creepy about the woods, but I remember feeling very calm back there, despite generally having attention and anxiety problems. I had a dream one night that me and Alex, but neither of the other two were hanging out in the woods, and an old woman came up to us to tell us that we shouldn't go back there anymore, and that the woods were private property. 
and then she turned around and walked up into the sky. The next morning I was telling Alex about the dream, and I got to the part with the old lady. I say, and she told us not to go back into the woods behind the bus stop anymore, and Alex finishes the sentence because it's private property and then she floated away. It turns out that Alex had been having the same dream every now and then for a few months at that point. He'd never told me about it. We compared a few other details about the dream, and what Alex said sounded familiar, i.e. it was foggy, there was a green painted iron gate that didn't really exist, but these parts I'm willing to chalk up to the power of suggestion. This happened this morning, actually, and I cannot get it out of my head. My grandmother just passed away at the end of July, and my grandfather has not been in the best condition since. So last night I was having a dream, and it was about my grandparents. I rarely dream about them. They were sitting in this room on a bed, very neat and clean, and they were joking around and talking with me about random things. I was sitting at the foot of my grandfather's side. He pulled out a doll and started doing ventriloquism, which makes no sense to me at all, but we were just carrying on a happy conversation. I woke up to my phone ringing. It was my mom. My grandpa had just passed away in his sleep. Tomorrow would have been their 62nd wedding anniversary. My sister and I have a good friend that we met around 2003 or 2004. We were all living in the same city, but we grew up in different cities. A few years later, she met our immigrant mother, who was a seamstress. One day, she was with her own mother talking about us, where we were from, and our mother. Her mom suddenly said, that's funny, I got married in that city, and I remember having a foreign lady make my wedding dress for me. A few days later, my sister was sorting through old family photos and found a picture of a couple that she didn't recognize on their wedding day from around the late 70s or early 80s. The bride in the picture was our friend's mother. The creepiest coincidence I can think of is when I was in high school. It was around the time Princess Diana had died. I visited my grandmother at her job at the doctor's office to have lunch with her. Everyone in the break room was watching coverage at the funeral when my grandmother said, I wonder if Mother Teresa would get this kind of coverage if she died. Like clockwork, an announcer came on and told us the breaking news that Mother Teresa had passed away. Everyone made the slow head-to-eye contact with my grandmother To this day, my grandmother says it was a coincidence. This is buried, but I hope someone reads it. I did. My best friend was on the father-son fishing trip at Sioux Narrows, Ontario. I'm from North Dakota, and so were my friends and his family. Now, there's this bridge that's apparently 50 to 60 feet above the water. My friend was with another mutual friend who had gone on the trip. These two had a tradition of jumping off the bridge into the water. On this particular trip, my friend's dad had a crazy dream where one of them jumped off and died. It shook him to the point where he made all the people on the trip promise they wouldn't jump. My two friends ignored the warning and went for it anyway. As you have already figured out, my friend never came out of the water. One of the best people I've ever met is gone. Last year, a friend of mine was diagnosed with cancer, and it was bad. I hadn't kept up with him much because hospitals and seeing my friends waste away scared me. I know, I know, bad. But I can't help it. Anyway, it had been about ten months since I had spoken to him, and out of the blue, I had this crazy, vivid dream of me talking to him. He was back to normal, but he kept telling me he wasn't okay. I apologized for not seeing him and told him I still cared about him and wanted to go to his funeral. He told me that he'd make sure I found out so I could attend. I woke up, checked the time, and went back to bed. Later, I realized I'd overslept and went to get ready. When I checked my phone, I found out via Facebook that he had died within 10 minutes of me waking from that dream. I was creeped out for days. Most recently, I had a dream I was pregnant with triplets, and later that day, my ex-roommate announced she was pregnant and three months along the date. When I was at my friend's house for a sleepover when I was about 9 to 10 years old, it was getting really late, so we decided to go to sleep. I woke up at about 2 a.m., and I don't know what woke me up, but 
I heard the bathroom door across the hall slam shut and open again. I didn't bother to turn around on the floor and see if my friend had gotten up. I just went back to sleep. The next morning, I asked her if she was the one who had slammed the door, and she looked pretty genuine when she shook her head. So we asked her brother, her brother, and mother, and father. No one slammed the door, but my friend said she heard it too. So I knew I wasn't dreaming or hearing things that weren't there. After that, I never went back to her house.